7.30 on Sunday. Now, these are Sundays. Traditionally, Sunday is the MLS Next Pro Day, but they've shifted from Saturday to Sunday for the first time back because of uh, League's Cup and all that kind of stuff. So here's the deal. 7.30 Sunday, we start with Hell is Real. Heck is Plausible, I think, was last week. Hell is Real is this week. 7.30, crew in the composite, courtesy of our friends at Odds Portal, are an even money plus 100. Cincinnati is a plus 258, and the draw is pretty much the same thing. And it is on the free side of Apple TV, and it is your FS1 game from Lower.com Field at a 739 kick is 10-7 and 6, welcomes 15-2 and 6. Fun facts. Cincinnati defeated Crew 3-2 at home May 20. Second MLS victory over their in-state rival. They've drawn four and lost five. Columbus has never lost at home against Cincinnati, winning the last three meetings at home by a combined score of 8 to two crew are unbeaten in their last 10 home matches in all comps winning seven including a penalty shootout loss to minnesota dating back to early august of 22 columbus has lost only one of their last 22 matches at lower.com in all competitions winning 14 of them do we need to go any further no you didn't need to go that far (laughs) uh cincinnati in this um still always funny to me that Cincinnati and Columbus decided to make a rivalry based off of the kind of billboard you see every two miles south of the Nat line in Georgia. Correct. It's kind As, of like us making a it's like us making a rivalry that like one inch of accumulation snowfall is real. Yeah, y'all get that too. Mm-hmm. A lot more than we do. Y'all made us y'all made a rivalry off of a giant billboard. Yes. Buddy. We got we got those we got those that are like shockingly more graphic too. Uh-huh. Yeah. That is true. I don't recommend it. Yes, uh, Miami and Charlotte got PPD because Miami's kind of busy, and that is on Saturday night at nine o'clock at Geodis, By the way, so the Monday show could be stacked. Could be a Lucas Panzeca visit. Could be a Jessica Charman visit. Uh, I think Bart, I think, is going to visit with senior superlatives from the uh, Women's World Cup. So Monday could be very interesting. Philadelphia playing Monterey at six o'clock on Apple TV and Season Pass. Then at nine o'clock, it's Nashville and Miami from Geotis. That's your Saturday. If Nashville will have the co- I wonder if our Nashville. I wonder if Philadelphia will have the cojones to actually play their game for ninety minutes. The the one that they played in the first three and went down one nil to uh, Inter Miami, or their actual normal one that we're used to seeing. No, play their actual game that they played in. Look, Game State took advantage of that in the second half, but still, they were more aggressive and they like were actually pressing Miami and trying to make them uncomfortable, doing what Philadelphia does well instead of, I don't know. Being afraid of messy? Yeah, exactly. Who, who, by the way, has no problem. It's okay playing. to be afraid. Yeah. <laughs> Look at what he's doing. Yeah. He, but, and by the way, he, ha- he has no fear of playing on turf. Finally said it in his press opportunity yesterday. The fact that we had to have this conversation just gives me a migraine. Um, We've been talking about it the entire time. He hadn't given you, he had given, he had not given anyone a solid quote about this to say that yes or no. Mm -hmm. And people running out here like he had said this verbatim that he wasn't going to play on turf. And then you, you, you you reference, you can't reference like the, 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 the tabloid rags in England. Like it's, it's, you can, well, I'm rephrasing, you can. Yeah. Just not going to take you seriously when you do. That's why we always sit there and say, when it's the three and the four letter paper, take the information at your own peril. Yeah. But it, it it was very annoying that like you had all this discussion and now Bessie's like, no, I'll be fine. Yeah, I'm good. Like, yeah, I mean, until he didn't like like we said, uh, like we talked about before, like and I, I tweeted out yesterday that the, if there's anything I'm concerned about. With him and Ahmad, it's the fact that you're playing in La Paz four days before the game. Mm-hmm. Like, and La Paz is not sea level. And La Paz is not sea level, but you're going to be playing a really exhausting, you know, an exhausting World Cup qualifier. Um, also, he hasn't given you any like indication that he's not going to continue with the national team. Yeah. He said he might not make it to 26. Mm-hmm. Um, but he hasn't really given you any indication. That you know he he won't that that he won't be part of this national team because if you think for a minute if they get into a weird spot he's not going to drag them to the Olympics yeah um mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. is that 
Uh, 7.30 also, Red Bulls in D.C. and the Atlantic Cup. But that is on the free side of Apple TV. Side note involving D.C. United, uh, Memphis 901, Wade Bill Hamid. So, uh, yeah. He hadn't played in a while anyway. It's fine. No. Um, Memphis is kind of chugging along. Let's check the USL standing. Yeah, I think they're in that gaggle. Like, they're in fourth. Yeah, three four in the in the East. Yeah, uh, they're 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 right there with Loose City. Yeah, Loose City. Uh, Loose City caught a uh, Loose City caught a, a shot across the chin from Charleston yesterday because <laughs> Ben Pierman thing. You know, now we have to go play in Detroit, which is a tougher <laughs> environment than you just played, which is oh, so. Oh, um, yeah. Catch the strays from Loose City. Oh, yeah, they, well, Pittsburgh Riverhounds are first in the East still, too. And Bob Lilly's still yelling, yeah. Mm-hmm. Red Bulls are a minus uh, one and a quarter. DC's a plus 340. Your draw's a plus 265. I'm going Red Bulls in that one. That's uh, that's yeah. fairly simple. Uh, yeah. Also on the board, on season pass at 730 from City Field, it is NYC and Loons, and your juice boxes in this one, NYC is a minus 106. Minnesota United is a plus 280, and your draw is a plus 259. Remember, this is a composite of anywhere from uh, 16 to 17, you know, 15 to 20 different juice box purveyors in and around the world. So your composite has NYC at a minus 106 at home at City Field. Draws a plus 259. Minnesota United is a plus 280. Uh, welcome back, Maxi Morales. I don't know where he is when it comes to his own uh, getting back into playing shape, but I'm looking at NYC. I really am. Uh, NYC, just because it's at home. Yeah. Like, <clears throat> it's hard to pick against them at home. Yes. Uh, also on the board, it is uh, at 730, the Canadian Classique at BMO on the free side of Apple TV, Toronto and Montreal. And Toronto is a plus 131 favorite, draws a plus 252. CF Montreal is a plus 194 in this one. Montreal is so hard to predict this year. Um, I'm going to go with them just because uh, they're, they're just they're hard, to, they're hard to pin down. 311 and 10 hosting 912 and 2. CF Montreal hasn't lost any of its last six MLS meetings with Toronto, winning five, including winning uh, each of the last three. Both of the, both the six match unbeaten run and the three match win streak are CF Montreal's longest uh, such runs against Toronto FC in the MLS history of the rivalry. Toronto FC has lost eight straight in all comps following a pair of defeats in League's Cup, longest losing streak in all comps in club history. Four of the eight losses have come by one nil score lines, including three of the last four. CF Montreal has collected just five points, scored five goals through their first 12 road matches this season. Only winning one, Montreal's failed to score in nine of those 12, as only the Red Bulls with 10 in 2009 have been shut out more often than the first 12 road games of their season. Sean Johnson apparently is out for a month with a bone broken in his hand apparently sustained it at practice. The team released that information yesterday. Ricky says Toronto is a dumpster fire still, and they are a dumpster fire even with the exchange rate. I'm going Montreal in this one. And uh, you got folks that won out. John, I haven't had a chance to talk to you about this. John Herdman in discussion with Toronto about being their new head coach. I want to <laughs> laugh. But at the same time, what if John Herdman is okay as a club coach, but not as a national team coach? Oh, God. We'll see. Uh, I think Canada might benefit from it. I think Canada might benefit from just... Canada's got their... From not having John Herdman as their national team coach. Canada's got a lot to work on right now. They've got got a lot to deal with. Um, They do. They do. Absolutely, they do. But I think if they if they kind of like you know took a deep breath, step outside, go touch some grass, get a new manager, or maybe get some new ideas in there, maybe they can build on what they got. I just think Herdman's ceiling is kind of limited. Yes, that is true. Uh, Eight thirty kicks. Fire hosting Orlando City. Fires a plus one twenty four. Your draws a plus two forty eight. Orlando is a plus 211. That one is on season pass. And that one is at Soldier Field. 
Chicago and Orlando, this is the time of year where Oscar Pareja decides, I'm just going to try to get us into the playoffs. This is where he kind of eases in and just kind of settles, and it's like, you know, we're good. He becomes more pragmatic, and I mean that in the negative term, not in the sense of just trying to be realistic about things. He plays far safer than he has traditionally in the first two-thirds of the season. With this 10-match sprint, 10-ish match sprint, does Oscar Pareja you know, try to be normal? Or does he do what he has done and revert to type? That is the big question I've got for Orlando. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like watching somebody – uh, if you've ever watched like Olympic, like Roman Greco wrestling, someone just settling into ground game. Like, every, like everyone's tired by the third, by you know the, the third round, third minute, um, the third, third set of three minutes, mm-hmm. um, and you just like settle into a hold. <laughs> it's mm-hmm. like we're just gonna, I'm just gonna hold you here for a minute while we go both catch our breath. All right, <laughs> and we'll move again, or just kind of like boxers leaning on each other. At times. Uh-huh. Yes, um, I think Orlando will be fine because I think they can just talent their way through to get to the playoffs. They'll be fine. Um, the Tom Bogert's piece this week, though, about you know, potential transfers down the line, Orlando might have a couple guys on the way out in the winter. Not necessarily guys they're looking to get rid of, but you know, bigger fish might come calling, or bigger oceans might come calling for the fish. Yes, uh, so- we'll see. But give me Orlando in this game. Yeah, I'm right there with you. I think Orlando gets this one done. If not, if not a draw. Uh, also, at Shell Energy at 839, Houston hosting Portland. This one is on season pass. Glenn Davis on the mic on the radio side. Dynamo are a minus 110. Portland is a plus 282. And your draw is a plus 270. I've got to go with Houston at home until further notice. Yeah, um, because... Ben Olsen just kind of doing Ben Olsen things, man. In in year one, yeah. Ben, this and this is the thing. How how long does Ben Olsen do Ben Olsen things in Houston with Dynamo, and then goes and frustrates people? How many years is is the the Houston Dynamo under Ben Olsen the the new coach smell, the new car smell, and then when does it start to fade and, and turn into? to normal uh, what we see with Ben Olsen just kind of being okay. So we'll see. But I've got to go with Houston in this one. And uh, 8, 10, and 5 hosting 6, 9, and 8. Kickoff at 8.39. That one is on uh, season pass. Also on the board uh, for these uh, matchups, 9.30 kick at City Park. All caps SC on the free side and is the second match in the uh, FS1 doubleheader. All caps is hosting Austin FC. And in this one, all caps, minus 115, your draw is a plus 294. Austin is a plus 273. I've got to go all caps as well. They need a win in the worst way. And I think that Austin being on the road will uh, will give it to them. Nico mentioned yesterday not having uh, Diego Fagundes uh, as a part of their offense. I want to know what their offense is going to look like going forward. And uh, in this stretch run, I want to I want to see. And so when the uh, Missouri based uh, when the Missouri based uh, fr- turn of phrase is applied to your visitors coming from Texas and not the all caps franchise, I'm going with all caps at 930. Yeah. Four matches at 1030. LAFC hosting Colorado Rapids. LAFC is a minus 217. Your draws a plus 372. And the Rapids are a plus 530 in the composite. I don't think we need to go any further nope. in this. Don't overthink it. Nope, don't overthink it. It's on season pass at BMO as uh, LAFC is 10-6-7 uh, and seven hosting 3-10-10. and 10. Don't overthink it and don't waste any juice boxes on it. Also on the board in, in your 10-30 kicks. And we got four of them, L.A. and RSL. This one's at Dignity Health Sports Park in Carson, California, 10-30, 10-39 kick, and it's on season pass. All these other matches. Which, which L.A.? L.A.G. Oh, RSL then. 
Yeah, RSL at 10, 7, and 7, visiting 5, 10, and 7. Your juice box is in this one. LAG is a plus 116. This one might be your line mistake of the weekend. LAG is a plus 116. RSL to draw is a plus 282, and RSL is a plus 200 on the road at LAG. Who thought that signing 37-year-old Billy Sharp on a free from Sheffield uh, United was going to help them with their bench woes? Um, RSL at a plus 200 on the road at LAG. Take it, run. Mm-hmm. Uh, Vancouver and San Jose, as we are uh, going to do Atlanta United and Seattle last, and uh, Abby has posted uh, supporters uh, group notes. BC Place, 10-30, 10-39 kick as Vancouver is hosting San Jose as 8-7-7 seven, and seven hosts 8-7-8. Eight, and eight. Juice boxes in this one. Vancouver's a minus 125, draws a plus 288, San Jose is a plus 313. Traditionally, traveling to BC Place is tough. Two teams about the same in the Western Conference. I've got to go with Vancouver because of home field advantage. Yeah, uh, give me them. Then the last one, Seattle and Atlanta. It is going to be a 10-39 kick, and it is, once again, it's on-season pass. Uh, you can catch up with Mike and Jason. Uh, 10 o'clock, if, I'm at, if my math is correct, 10 o'clock pregame, 92.9 the game and the Odyssey app. And it will be a post-game show after. But, yeah, 10 o'clock Eastern pregame, 10.39 kick with Seattle and Atlanta from Lumen Field. Seattle's had a lot of injuries, a lot of inconsistency. They're 10, 8, and 6 in the West. Atlanta's 9, 7, and 8 in a very, very crazy Eastern Conference. Fun facts. Three of the five all-time meetings between Seattle and Atlanta have ended in draws, each team recording a 2-1 home win. Seattle's victory came in July 2019. Atlanta's win came in the last meeting in August of 22. Seattle's won two of their last eight regular season home matches, drawing three and losing three. Though it's avoided defeat in their last four at Lumen Field, winning one and drawing three. Sounders have allowed only one goal over the last four home league games, but have scored only twice themselves in four matches. Atlanta United's won three of their last 29 road games in all comps, dating back to early April last year, losing 16, drawing 10. Atlanta's only victory in their last 12 away from home was a 1-0 victory at Montreal in early July, where they've drawn five and lost six. Only Nashville, with 22, has conceded fewer goals than the Sounders' 23 this season. Stefan Fry leads all goalkeepers with 11 clean sheets. And remember, Steph Fry's been without the injuries, too. Steph Cleveland has been in. So Stefan Fry has 11 clean sheets and hasn't played a full season. Two more than anybody else. Two away from equaling his own single-season club record of 13 set in 2017. Six of Tiago Almada's eight goals this season have been scored on set pieces. Three direct free, one corner, one penalty, one indirect free. His five non-penalty set piece goals are two more than any other player in Major League Soccer this season. Seattle minus 110, draws a plus 261. Atlanta United's a plus 292. Nico thought that this one was a draw, either 1-1 or 2-2. He thought it would be a, it, it could be a very, very exciting match, and he was also going to play the over at plus 3.5. Yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting because it's the first time we've seen Atlanta with Miles back in a while. Yep. Um, defense has been was noticeably better with him in the team. Um, and yeah, you managed to you 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 found a workaround around that by going to you know that you know call it a you know what, three four three yeah um, however you want to call it. But Miles being back in gives you more stability. It gives you a guy who is one of the better players on this continent at his job. <clears throat> so it's good to have him back in the flow. It's going to be tough um, because you're going across the country. Mm-hmm. And you're getting your body acclimated to it <laughs> because it's 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 a tough place to play. Atlanta hasn't won there. They have played three times. Uh, they drew in seventeen. A really weird game. They lost in twenty. Yeah, I'm sorry. They lost in nineteen. Yep. Because that was the game where they were down two nil. Joseph scored a header, and it kind of sparked the turnaround for that season. I think. And then last year you had, or two years ago, excuse me, you had the draw in twenty one where. It's kind of the Franco Ibarra game, like young Franco Ibarra. Like, 
played an amazing game. You got a penalty at the very end to rescue a point. Yeah. But it's been a tough place to play. And it will be a tough place to play. It'll be an emotional day because, of, like we talked about, you have Pineda and you have uh, Garth Lagerway getting honored before the game. Mm-hmm. There will be emotions. Um, but at the end of the day, you have to go out and find at least a point. You'd yeah. love to find three. Um, it looks like Saba will not be a part of this. Right. But you will start to see new faces get factored in and stuff that you've worked on over the break can be applied to live action. We know Atlanta's played at least one um, kind of scrimmage, for lack of a better word, against St. Louis. Right. Don't really know what else they've been doing. Don't really know what Seattle's been doing. I want to say I saw that Seattle had tried to set something up but was unable to, which makes sense. It's, it's a tough, weird time. You're in this lull with the Leeds Cup and yeah. you're not in it where other teams from other leagues are playing. You're in the low, you have to go find another MLS team and you have to find one where it, where it sinks up and it makes sense for you. And it's tough, especially for Seattle, because if it's not Vancouver or Portland, or if they got something else going on, then you got to go a long way to find somebody. But we'll see how both of them kind of knock the rust off of the gears a bit. And, um, I, think, and I think that draw that's... Draw feels very doable. Yeah, and, and I think teams. to your point, I, I think to your point, I think probably it's going to take a while for both of these teams to to get all the gears cycled through. So I would not anticipate the game being off to a hot start in the first 20 minutes. I think that you're going to have two boxers trying to sit there and figure out, uh, you know, what they can do and what they can't. I think that first 20 minutes, it's it's probably going to be uh, a lot of stuff in the middle third. I don't anticipate a whole lot of stuff in each attacking third in the first 20 minutes. And then where do you adjust from there? And I think that, you know, looking at having miles at the back, I think obviously is going to be the big stabilizer that you're looking for. And, and being in that first match back that counts for something Having someone like Miles back there for the first time since June the 10th, uh, you know, it's you you need that kind of you need that stability there. Uh, the other element to what you were discussing when it came to not having to play, you know, not being playing in a match for three weeks because of your exit in Leagues Cup is that you're hoping that folks like Yorgos Yakamakis are as healthy as they can be. Because remember the ups and downs that we were having with Jorgis almost on a on a match by match or a, a by match basis, where okay, how many minutes can we get? He's only on forty five. He's only on sixty. Then he's got to be removed. What uh, what are we getting from uh, Jorgis Yakamakis now that he's had three weeks of recovery for this big match in this stretch run here going up against Seattle to start things off? And and I think that. Going out there a day early is going to help. It'll get you acclimated. You know, we were talking to Michael Parkhurst about acclimation and going out to the West Coast and things like that, trying to figure out what to do and trying to be at, uh, you know, trying to be at 100% at 1039 on a Sunday night is the, uh, the, the other interesting part of all of this when it comes to uh, travel and getting adjusted. Uh, Abby, public service announcement. Supporters are meeting up at Hatback Bar and Grill, 1201 First Ave South in Seattle for those going this weekend. Pre-game meeting at about 2.30 at same location in, uh, in Soto, getting ready for the, uh, the game at Lumen Field. So Hatback Bar and Grill, pre-game meeting at 2.30 on Sunday. So... For those of you on this side of the planet, 5.30 Eastern, 2.30 Pacific time is when you're meeting at the at Hatback. So uh, biggest thing is just everybody travel safely. Everybody, everybody travel safely. Get out there and have a good time. And be there to support uh, Atlanta United. Be there to support Gonzalo and be there to support Garth and and, and show show your support for, for everybody out there because this is the stretch run. And every game is going to be amplified in importance as we go further here. Very, very busy Sunday. Very important Sunday for those that 
uh, might have forgotten how things are in the East and just how crazy it is. Atlanta right now is in seventh at 35 points. But remember what we've been discussing about who's playing whom. Hell is real impacts Columbus and Cincinnati. Columbus is a point ahead of you at 36 points. If you're an Atlanta United fan, you're rooting for Cincinnati to take care of business. That keeps Columbus close to you. Orlando's two points ahead of you in fifth place at 37 points. We mentioned Orlando. Orlando going to Chicago. Nashville, they're kind of busy. They're on. They're busy on Saturday night. They're at 38 points. So if things go your way, Cincinnati takes care of business. Chicago helps you out. You could be in something akin to fourth or fifth place. You could be in fourth or fifth place by the end of it all on Sunday night. And just how nuts is it? Cincinnati's eight points clear, 51 to 43. New England second and 43 points. And sidebar, we do not have any kind of uh, resolution on the Bruce Arena situation yet. Phillies at 40. They're kind of busy. Nashville's at 38. Orlando, 37. Columbus, 36. Atlanta, 35. Chicago, 32. D.C., 30. So that group from basically either 4 to 7 or 3 to 7, separated by five points. Five teams, five points right now. Atlanta would be fifth in the West with their record and only a point behind Seattle. Seattle at 36 points would be in sixth place. And they right now in the Western Conference, just to give you an idea. St. Louis is four points clear of everybody. LAFC and RSL are at 37. Seattle's at 36. Austin and San Jose are at 32. Vancouver, 31. Dallas, 30. Houston, 29. Minnesota, 28. Six points, or sorry, uh, four points, six spots. Five through 10 in the Western Conference right now. That's how crazy this run-in is going to be for Major League Soccer across the board. So if Atlanta does what they does, uh, if they get a positive result, they get full points, probably fifth place because they would be behind Nashville in goal difference and wins and things like that. So, uh, yeah, this one, this one, Jared, is going to be wall-to-wall crazy. Yeah, they'd be in fifth because Nashville has 11 wins. Atlanta would have 10. But, yeah, just the, the groupings right now, it's very, very cramped with everything going on in Major League Soccer right now. Very, very cramped space. This is one of the smaller elevators that uh, you're going to be dealing with when it comes to uh, this 10 matches to go here in the regular season. You just have to take care of business. You mm-hmm. have to take care of your business, <clears throat> and then you let everyone else worry about everyone else. Because if you take care of your business, then you're not staring at schedules the entire time. Yeah. And so there's, like I said, it's going to be really, really interesting as we go forward. 